what's up guys this is step one domination and we're going to jump into uh, beginning pathology now we're starting just kind of a disease by disease uh, video series to do a quick little review on some of the main things to remember about each of the important diseases in pathology so we're going to be covering Wiscott Aldrich syndrome and I think I have a pretty cool mnemonic that will really help you to remember all of the important details that you need to be able to recognize the disease in patients and on the step one let's jump right into this so on most of these uh, videos I'll do on a particular pathology or disease, I'm always going to probably put this uh, picture of an anatomical position patient in the middle to kind of mark out the areas that are being affected by the particular pathology. And it kind of gives you a good visual aid of where all you will see the effects for this um, pathology, depending on the video. So you may be wondering, why do I have some sort of vial of something and it's telling you that it's poisonous here. So with the title Wiscott Aldrich, Wiscott Aldrich Syndrome, I want you to notice that Wiscott Aldrich sounds like, especially the word Wiscott, sounds like whiskey. So that's going to be our mnemonic for remembering all of the uh, uh, parts of this particular disease. So to begin, the part that you're actually going to have to memorize, but even this this is kind of self-explanatory. Wiscott Aldrich syndrome is when a a patient has a mutation or some sort of defect in what's called the WASP gene. Wiscott Aldrich syndrome protein gene. And when this is mutated, this particular gene is theorized to basically affect cytoskeleton function in cells. Cytoskeleton function in cells. In particular, it's hypothesized that it's affecting the cytoskeleton's ability to link cell membrane receptors to the cell uh, surface on the outside. So you can imagine if this is messed up, all of the problems that you're going to run into. Think of how immunology works. Think of all the receptors in immunology dealing with T cells and B cells and whatnot. So let's jump to our mnemonic. We have a our whiskey bottle right here. And let's just begin by saying when you drink whiskey, you're taking in alcohol, which, which an, an alcohol is basically ethanol right is an alcohol so the ol ending tells you that's an alcohol so we have an a we're basically taking in consuming alcohol which is then ethanol so a and e so we're increasing our levels of alcohol and ethanol in the body so then that goes along with the when you look at a blood panel you'll have iga the a for alcohol and ige increased okay and then also alcohol makes you basically sluggish and it messes with your your mentality, like your mentition basically. You don't think right. So M for mental, right, goes down. We can't function. So IgM goes down. Now moving forward, what else happens when you drink whiskey? Well, when you drink a lot of whiskey, you get dry skin. It dries your skin out because when you drink tons of whiskey, you become dehydrated and people who are dehydrated and have dry skin are more prone especially patients who have eczema to experience a, a worsening of their eczema so you can imagine dry skin would make eczema really bad so eczema and then even more so this also causes micro micro thrombocytopenia now, instead of writing just thrombocytopenia, I wrote micro. So thrombocytopenia just means decreased platelets. But micro is at the beginning. So not only do we have decreased platelets, but the platelets are small. Now, how do we remember micro thrombocytopenia with our whiskey uh, mnemonic? Well, when you drink a lot, you'll see that a lot of patients who are chronic alcoholics, they go into 
um, various types of anemia and it can happen. It's very prevalent with chronic alcoholics. So that should help you kind of remember thrombocytopenia. But the actual mechanism, if you know that this the WASP gene is defective and it's causing cytoskeletal function to be decreased, think, think back that with megakaryocytes, which produce platelets, and the way they produce platelets is they basically break off little portions of themselves using the cytoskeleton, internal cytoskeleton framework, let's say all of this is the cytoskeleton, this is how the cell can move and shift itself and cause different things to happen. Well, it needs that cytoskeleton to rip off little pieces of itself. And this is how platelets are formed. So a little piece gets ripped off and then you have what's called, that's a platelet. And that happens uh, tons of times with megakaryocytes and that's how platelets are formed. Well, if we have a defect in this WASP gene up here, you can imagine that this would be, you wouldn't, this wouldn't happen as much. And if, when it does happen, it would be, um, it wouldn't be to the full extent, the, the success rate that it needs to. Let's say when it is ripped off, it wouldn't be the correct size. It would be smaller than it's supposed to. So you're going to have decreased platelet count. That's the thrombocytopenia. And there, and when you do have some platelets being formed, they're not going to be formed correctly. So that's where the small size comes in. And then you're also going to have um, chronic, basically you're going to be uh, more prone to all types of infections. The reason is because, and this is probably the most self-explanatory thing in all of this, you're more prone to all types of infections because I set up here, the mechanism of action of this disease is that the WASP gene is mutated. And this deals with the cytoskeleton function in cells. And I even mentioned earlier that that's specifically the cytoskeleton's ability to hold cell membrane receptors. Now remember, with T cells and B cells and you know all of the different immune cells, these lymphocytes, T cells especially, can turn into CD4 helper cells or CD8 cytotoxic cells. And the way that they turn into these two types of cells and the way that it's differentiated is through cell membrane uh, function and, and being activated through all the various um, pathways with MHC1 and 2. And I'm not going to get into too much detail with that. That can be in an immunology lecture for later on. But basically, the immune system, your immune system is messed up because your body is going to begin to have issues with even having the correct function of the cell membrane receptors because of the cytoskeleton not um, posting them properly and the cell being able to move and adjust and be acti activated. So I hope that all of these things make sense when you look at this whiskey mnemonic that you can begin to go through and say, okay, we're ingesting with whiskey, we're ingesting um, alcohol, which is an ethanol, that's A and E goes up. You were not thinking straight, that's your mental IgM goes down. So this is increased IgA, I'm sorry, increased uh, IgA and IgE, but it's going to be decreased IgM because we're losing our mental ability. Uh, you have dry skin when you drink a lot because you're dehydrated. You can imagine that someone who has eczema, that would increase their eczema um, how bad basically they're affected with eczema at that moment. So they're going to have eczema presentation or skin irritation. You have the microthrombocytopenia. We talked about how that exactly occurs is because the megakaryocytes rely on their cytoskeleton to break off the platelet pieces. And when the cytoskeleton is not working because of this WASP gene uh, mutation up here at the top, then you're basically not having enough platelets being broken off from the megakaryocyte. And then also, not if the for the few ones that do get broken off, they're probably not going to be broken off to the size that they need to be. But how it fits into our mnemonic is that when you drink a lot, I said remember that uh, many people who are chronic alcoholics um, have some sort of anemia, and that should help you remember. Okay, a certain way you could have anemia is thrombocytopenia, and then the last one is kind of common sense, prone to all types of infections because their immune system is. Um, Basically being affected, because we explained it up here, the cytoskeleton function in cells, um, including the ability of the cytoskeleton to hold the cell membrane receptors that are needed in T and B cell activation differentiation and whatnot. So this is a quick little video covering all of the main parts of wiscott aldrich syndrome and how to recognize it in a patient. So if we look at the anatomical uh, position patient that we have here. We know that immu immunoglobulins are all over. So that would just be um, in our patient, this will just be affected all over. 
Um, one last thing I would like to say though is in the lymphatic tracts going through the body, uh, this particular disease, this particular disease has an increased risk. I'll write it over here. Increased risk of um, lymphomas. So that would show that that would be a systemic problem that they would have. The eczema can happen anywhere, so that's all over in our patients, so there's no way to mark that. The microthrombocytopenia, that would you would see effects of that all over, whether it be internal bleeding anywhere in the body. Um, you would be bleeding more from cuts and whatnot. And then the immuno... Um, the, prone to all types of infections that could affect a various number of parts in the body depending on the micro um, the microorganism or the pathogen that you are affected with from this so I hope this helped you remember this mnemonic if you can just remember whiskey and you can talk through all of these parts you should be able to get this disease um, right on the step any step question that they ask I'll see you in another video bye guys <music>